You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Ms. Rice feeling it. Make wow. it three for three. And see you Lino. See you later. Here's a chance for Slash, and then there's a shot and a goal. Will Spare will take it all the way. Touchdown, Seahawks. The extra look and the goal. A gorgeous goal by him. Welcome to Northport High School, where this afternoon it's the Orlin and Cone Game of the Week on the Varsity Media Sports Network featuring the fifth-seeded Lions of West Islip High School against the fourth-seeded Tigers of Northport in the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals. Good afternoon, everyone. Dylan Butler here. Just about set for the start of the postseason here in Division Two. We had some playoff games last night as well as we were able to bring you that Ward Melville win over Sachem North. Uh, but this should be certainly a special game. The four versus the five. West Islip comes in with a four and three record. Northport five and two. These two teams played each other back in week two with Northport winning 20 one to seven. We'll stay right here. We'll have the national anthem from the Northport Band. Great scenes here from the field. With a very large marching band here for Northport High School, but should be a great one here. We're going to look at our impact players, and you can see at the uh, left side of that group of captains, it is a running back extraordinaire, Conrad Machaney, the senior. 138 carries, 846 yards, 10 touchdowns, as tough as they come, was all county last year. Good chance he will be that way again. He goes 100 miles an hour, a guy that will never leave the field for the Lions of West Islip. And for Northport, you want to talk about a do-it-all guy for them? That's what J.J. Allstrand is. He is a wing back. He will catch the ball. He will run the ball. He will kick the ball. In fact, he kicked the winning field goal in their last game, a 17-14 win over Smithtown West, a 23-yard 23 23 field goal as time expired to win that Week 8 game for Northport. Let's take a look at the brackets in Suffolk Division 2, and we'll show you kind of what we're – uh, looking at here again, they will reseed after this, what they call the qualifying round. We'll call it the quarterfinal round, but you can see uh, the matchup there. All of these games are this afternoon, and in fact, they're all uh, at the same time. So we'll try to, if we can, maybe get you some updates throughout 
uh, this broadcast, but you can see uh, it's been the black and blue division, certainly in Suffolk County. Uh, none of those teams undefeated. It's hard to call anybody a favorite between Lindenhurst, Bellport, Northport, Hills East, uh, West Islip as well. West Islip is the defending champion. They won in the spring. West Islip went 5-0, and beating Bellport 24-21. to And that kind of broke uh, a bit of a slump there for West Islip because uh, they had gone multiple years reaching the final but then losing in the final. In 2019 and 18, they lost to Lindenhurst. In 2017, they lost to North Babylon. 2016, they lost to Hills West. But the Lions are the defending champions. They're trying to make it two in a row. But first, obviously, they need to try to win this game. Their head coach in his 13th season for West Islip is Steve Maletti, a 1992 graduate of West Islip High School. The captain of that 1991 team has been coaching at his alma mater really since 1998. A guy who's been around that program, as he calls it, forever. So West Islip very much in Steve Maletti's blood. The same could be said for Northport's head coach, Pat Campbell. He is only in his third season as the head coach, but he is a Northport 1983 graduate. So again, a guy who has played on this Northport team, a guy who has uh, been an assistant coach for a long time and now uh, taking the helm as the head coach of the Tigers. So just about set to start here at Northport. Again, these two teams met all the way back in week two. That was a 21-7 to win for Northport. In that game as well, it was uh, an interesting situation because of so many injuries for Northport that... Uh, Campbell said, you know, out of necessity, we had to move Tim Cleary back uh, to a free safety position. He was one of the key linebackers for this team in that matchup in week two. But uh, Cleary became a free safety in that game. And uh, it's been a situation or a position that's been great for him ever since. In that first meeting, again, back in week two, Owen Johansson, the Northport QB, went 10 of 15 for 302 yards and two touchdowns. Allstrand, four receptions, 176 yards, and an 81-yard touchdown as well. So about set for the kickoff. It's a nice, crisp fall afternoon here. In Northport, great scenes as well, big home crowd on hand here as well. Northport will, uh, they won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will kick off here. Doing the end, uh, doing the honors is Brendan Connolly. It's fielded at about the 15 yard line. A little east-west return and out toward the West Islip sideline. So the Lions will start off offensively from their own 30-yard line. They're being led onto the field by their QB, Patrick Keenan, a junior, a lacrosse player as well. And what a standout Keenan has been for them. There you see him coming in. He does not have a cast on today. It's the first game that he hasn't. Suffered a broken arm to his non-throwing arm in week three against Smithtown West. Well, he was in the lineup in week eight against North Babylon, their rivalry game with that cast on as well and still played and had a big difference there. There's Machini and not getting much. A no gain on first down. Let's take a look at the starters offensively for West Islip. And there you see them up top. Up front, it's Antipas, Tap, Gitzinger, De Cristoforo, and Mushorn. Keenan is your quarterback. Machini is your tailback. And their wide receivers are the Pirapato brothers, Chris and Joe, as well as Calderon and Carpinello. Second and 10. There's the handoff. And Machini gets a good gain on second down. Let's look at the starters 
defensively for Northport. Up front, you've got Lamondola, DeSiglia, Pokowitz. Your linebackers are McNaughton, McEnroe, Eagers, Allstrand, and Sandrib. Corners, Campbell and Hellriggle, and Cleary is your safety. Third and two. And that's a fantastic looking tackle. You saw Ryan McEnroe, McEnroe, number 42, jump in there. And we'll see the spot. It looks like it will be just shy. It'll be a yard shy of the first down. So decision time now for Maletti already. A fourth down from out toward midfield. Obviously, if you get stopped here, Northport's got terrific field position. And it does appear like the Lions are going to go. We could have a cadence situation here, but then again, you don't want to burn a timeout necessarily, right, on your first drive. So here we go. Fourth and one. There's the handoff. That's a terrific tackle. And again, it is McEnroe. It was Gagliardo, the runner. But McEnroe stuffs him. Ryan McEnroe, the senior, had 38 tackles, three for losses coming in. A smart kid, a physical kid, and here you see again, watch two come around. Here's 42 again. Bang! Back-to-back -back tackles by McEnroe, and a turnover on downs as the Tigers, now a terrific field position as they take over in West Islip territory, and their QB, you see him there, number 28, Owen Johansson, last game, reached or surpassed the 1,000-yard mark in terms of passing, 48 for 103. Also has nine touchdowns on the season. Here is Johansson. Pressure comes from Machaney. Johansson on his back foot. Slings it. That is complete. Dodging a tackler. And in to the end zone is J.J. Allstrand. A 39-yard touchdown. And the Tigers on their first play from scrimmage have taken a 6-0 lead. Well, that's why we called him our impact player. Here you see it again. Good decision there by Johansson. And obviously Allstrand gets himself open from his defender. Also jukes him at about the five. And he gets in for the 39-yard touchdown. What a great start on both sides of the football for Northport. That PAT, though, is blocked. So the lead is 6 nothing. With 9.44 left in the first quarter. How about that for a start for Northport, huh? I mean, again, McEnroe gets you those stops defensively. And then this is what Allstrand and Johansson do. And you can see the pressure coming again from Machaney. Back foot down the field. Watch his juke right there. Excuse me. I'm going to the end zone. Allstrand with the score. That was his sixth touchdown reception of the year. His 15th reception as well. Head coach Pat Campbell calls Allstrand one of the most dynamic players in the division. You can see why, right? The only thing that maybe went wrong for Allstrand was he missed the PAT, which is his first miss of the year. He was 17 of 17 coming into that PAT attempt. So 6 nothing, the early score. in this Suffolk Division II quarterfinal game. Of all the divisions, maybe arguably on Long Island, you would say this is the most balanced. Where, again, you really can't say there's a favorite. We'll show you later on how the regular season standings ended up, and you could see the balance of power. There's the kick again by Connolly, fielded at about the 10-yard line by Aponte, and uh, this time gets out to about the 32-yard line. Butler, no relation with the tackle. A referee today is Mark Negrin Sr. 
the umpire, Mark Negrin Jr. Your line judge, Jose Ramos. The back judge, Bailey Negrin. So West Islip takes over it more or less where they started their first drive. A drive that faltered at the 39-yard line, and that's where... Northport scored from. There's McChaney again pushing forward to about the 35-yard line. On the season, the numbers for McChaney, impressive indeed. 138 carries, 846 yards, and 10 touchdowns for a West Islip team that will run the football a lot. You know that because the quarterback, Keenan, He's only 11 for 15 for 129. Now, again, he did miss a good chunk of the regular season. But there's another handoff. You see 51 Cleary in among a host of tacklers. And it was Gagliardo with the run. A senior, 5'9", 165 is Dylan Gagliaro. Very athletic. He knows this West Islip system well. And another third down now. Third and four. As West Islip will like to move the chains for the first time. Shotgun as Keenan rolls to his right. Cuts it back inside. Lowers the shoulder. And he will get the first down for himself. When Keenan was out injured from week three... Or from week four, here you see him again getting out of the pocket. Nice cut inside as well to make sure they had the first down. It was Bobby Richardson who was the backup who came in for Keenan. And again, remarkably, Keenan still with the cast on his non-throwing arm a week ago. Through the winning touchdown pass late in that rivalry win against North Babylon. Look at this push by McChaney. He'll get about... 11 on that first down run as the chains move again. Some big guys up front for West Islip. Let's see McChaney. He gets that hole right up the middle. You've got Tap as your left guard, De Cristofaro as your right guard. Pretty much that's where you ran between. And Tap is 265. De Cristoforo is 240. First and 10 from the Northport 44. It's Keenan tries to duck under a tackle. He'll get a few on first down. Tackle made. Looks like Dan Eagers. And Eagers, another guy, too, who was banged up. His first game back since a week one injury was that broadcast that we had against Hills East. And Eagers now is stepping in for the, an for the injured Andrew Miller. Miller's a big loss for Northport. Another guy who impacts the game in, in multiple ways. Second and nine. Keenan hands off to McChain. He lowers the shoulder. And again, good pursuit to the football there by the Tigers. Looks like 11, Dylan McNaughton was the first one in on the tackle. McNaughton, 42 tackles, one for a loss this year, a forced fumble, an interception. Another multiple sport athlete, three sport athlete, plays the cross, plays basketball as well McNaughton third and eight back to McChaney and look at 11 again with Cleary 51 as well as Eagers it looked like a host of tacklers and Johansson Johansson was the question mark defensively whether or not he would feature Only a gain of two, and this time West Islip will look to punt. It'll be an angled punt and a good one at that. And it takes a great bounce for West Islip inside the 10. So Northport will have long field here, but they only needed one play last time to get in the end zone. 
Uh, they will start from their own 10-yard line now on their second drive of the game. There is Owen Johansson coming on out. A rocket for an arm. Campbell says he doesn't think that he's had a quarterback like him in a very long time. He's also the first junior captain that Campbell said that they've had at Northport in a very, very long time. An alpha male, he calls him, Owen Johansson. First and 10 from the Northport. 10, 555 left in this first quarter. Inside handoff, spinning, turning was Jackson Campbell. 74 carries, 426 yards and three touchdowns on the year for Campbell. No gain on that first down carry. De Cristoforo in on the tackle for West Islip. Man is in motion. Another inside handoff, and this time it's a burst and to the outside as well. A huge run by Campbell. He is forced out at the 43 yard line. So no gain on first down. Campbell says, call my number again. I'll get a big run. There you see it again. Campbell breaks through, breaks a couple tackles, gets to the edge. That's a great upfield tackle as well. So it's first and 10 from the 43-yard line from Northport. We'll show you their starters after this next play. Johansson, that's a great look right over midfield. Finds number 17, Aiden Campbell, the coach's son. Let's show you those starters for Northport. Up front, you've got Locke, Poliotitis, Canales, Lamandola, and Hecht. Obviously, Johansson, your QB, Jackson Campbell, your running back, Sandrib, Allstrand, Campbell, and McNaughton at tight end for the Tigers. So Aiden Campbell, who has really worked himself into a starting job here. They moved the chains. Now they're in West Islip territory, first and 10 from the 47-yard line. Inside handoff, that's a great fake. Cutting inside again and getting another first down is Jackson Campbell. Northport, when they are at their best, they've gotten multiple guys who could hurt you. Campbell is one of them. There are your starters defensively for West Sides. Up front, it's Joe Pierpato. It's Acosta, Busa, and Sensi. Machini, Pierpato, Calderon, your backers, Gagliardo, and D'Angelo are your corners, and Barani and Richardson are at safety. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Back to Campbell. And another great job churning those legs, getting the push from the offensive line as well. Jackson Campbell rumbles to the 25-yard line, a gain of nine on first down. We showed you those guys up front. Some big dudes there, right? Poliotitis at left guard, 69. Lamandola at right guard. Poliotitis, a three-year varsity starter at left guard, number 69. Timeout for West Islip. Their defense has taken some shots here early on. We'll take the timeout with them as well. 3.20 left in this first quarter. It's the Orlin and Cone game of the week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Teed off by shoulder pain? We've got specialists for that. Realizing you've pulled out more than weeds? We've got specialists for that. Doing the twist making you shout? We've got specialists for that. Orlin and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, 
spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Welcome back to Northport. Tigers with a 6-0 lead, and they are threatening to score again. They have a second and one from the 25-yard line of West Islip. 320 left in this first quarter. Northport had a great start of the season. Won their first four games, and then they were back-to-back -back losses, tight losses to Lindenhurst and Hills East before a dramatic 17-14 win over Smithtown West to end the regular season. More on that in a second. Campbell again gets the inside handoff, gets it to the outside, and he's down at about the 20-yard line, but certainly enough there for a first down, or yeah, for a first down. But in that matchup, week eight, Allstrand, we mentioned before, 23-yard field goal as time expired. Eagers had an eight-yard TD run, which tied the game at 14. Just before the half, Dylan McNaughton had a big game defensively for the Tigers, 12 tackles, two of which were for losses and an interception, and McEnroe as well had a fumble recovery and an interception, first and 10 from the 21-yard line. Another inside handoff, spinning, turning, and getting down at about the 15-yard line was again Campbell. Tackle there by 56, Nick Alani, senior linebacker, a role model kid, a very versatile player as well. Maletti said we can put him at guard, tackle, middle linebacker. He'll be on special teams, a selfless type of player. The six foot two, 215 pound senior. Second and five for the Tigers. Under center again is Johansson. Rinse and repeat for Northport. Back to Campbell. And he pushes forward for a few more. This entire drive has been the Jackson Campbell show. Again, on the year, 74 carries for 426 yards for Jackson Campbell. And he's got Northport set up with a very manageable third and two. Checking into the game there, again, was McNaughton at tight end. As we saw Gaumont leave the game, Johansson. Hands off, why not? Campbell again. He will get the first down and more. It'll set up a first and goal for the Tigers. What a methodical first or second drive of this first half for Northport. Their first drive lasted all of one play as Johansson connected with Allstrand for that touchdown, a 39-yard score. Northport has dominated the time of possession, certainly, and they are threatening to tack on to their lead. They're eight yards away from doing just that. There is Campbell again. Oh, that's a great tackle. Looked like it was 28 for West Islip. Chris Pirapato, just a sophomore, is Pirapato. He's only played four games on varsity. He's already the number three tackler. There you see him again. Watch 28 here come in. Bang. Terrific leg tackle. And then he drives Campbell backwards. He's the younger of the two Pirapato brothers. His older brother, Joe, is the senior defensive end. So that's the end of the first quarter. A quarter that was very much dominated by the Tigers of Northport. They lead 6-0. They're threatening to tack on to that lead. It's the Orland and Cone game of the week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, 
graphics, and instant replay. Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Northport. Dylan Butler here with you. The Suffolk Division II quarterfinals between the fourth-seeded Tigers of Northport and the fifth-seeded Lions of West Islip. Northport facing a second and goal from the six-yard line. Johansson cuts right between, but only gets a yard. Looks like that was Acosta 54. And you could see Johansson a little bit banged up. Acosta and Busa, 54 and 58 for West Islip. They are the anchors of that defensive line. Both seniors, both captains as well. They've been that they've been those anchors for the last two years has that duo. They've played virtually every down at those defensive tackle spots. Third and goal from the sixth after no gain there for Johansson. That's the first play in this drive without Campbell. We they go back to Campbell and he's stuffed again. Looks like twenty eight again, Pirapato rolling from that pile. He was your tackler. We mentioned we see what he's doing defensively, right? But offensively, too, Pierapato had a big uh, job to do a week ago. So looking for the points, instead of going for it here, Northport will attempt the 20-yard field goal. It is Connolly to do so. Snap is up, it's a low kick, and it just ducks inside of that upright. Listen, they count the same, no matter if you put it into the parking lot or if you just cleared the sticks there, which he did. So a 20-yard field goal from Connolly extends this Northport lead to 9-0. So good start for Northport. We mentioned before West Islip, the defending county champions. It's been a while since Northport has been a football county champion. You have to go back to 1991 when they were the Division I champions, defeating Lindenhurst 49-14. Their previous, their only previous championship, how about this one? You go back to 1976, they beat West Islip. 21 to 6. Then it was called the Conference Triple A title. And those are the only two county football titles for Northport. They reached the championship game again in 1988, but they lost to Pat Med in that final. So 9 nothing is the score for Northport. It's not desperation time, certainly, for West Islip, but you got to imagine that Maletti would love to get a response, perhaps, on this drive. Or if it, anything, at least move the chains a little bit. There is a good look at Connolly. A line drive kick up the field. Fielded by Pirapato. Gets to the outside, and he's pushed... Out of bounds at midfield. So there's the versatility of Chris Pirapato. Doing a little bit of everything for the 
Lions, who will have their best field position just yet. We mentioned the Northport Championships a moment ago in 1991. There you go. They were also the Rutgers. I think it was the Cup then, but the Rutgers Cup champions that year as well. West Islip, first and 10 from the Northport 49-yard line. McCheney runs left and gets a good gain on first down. Tackler was Tom Butler, number 32. The senior looking to go to the Coast Guard Academy. He got some time a year ago, but he's that tough, physical, defensive back, the senior, number 32, Tom Butler. A gain of six for the durable Machini. More of that spread look now as Keenan takes it himself. He's hammered by Cleary at the 40. We were so impressed by Cleary when we saw him in person for the first time in that loss to Hills East. Again, it was this game in the regular season. Middle of the game, there was that in-game adjustment made by Northport where you moved Cleary to more of that free safety position. All the junior has done this year has led by a lot Northport's defense with 75 tackles on the year. Number 51 is a beast for Northport. Keenan rolls out, gets the first down, cuts inside, and he gets to about the 31-yard line. What you do have with Keenan, as you see him again, Rolls out, looks for options, then decides, you know what, I'm going to tuck it here, cut it inside. As Butler got him by the shoestrings. But what you have in Keenan is a guy that's got a lot left in the tank, right? Because, again, he was hurt in week three against Smithtown West, that broken arm. Didn't play again until week eight. So, yeah, he's, he was injured, but certainly uh, a lot left for him. There's Gagliaro on the inside handoff. Losing a lid on that play was Ryan McEnroe. So McEnroe is going to have to leave the field for a play. And he is replaced by Chase Hendrickson, number seven. Gain of two on that first down run. Keenan in shotgun has a couple of buddies next to him he will follow those guys looking to get the push forward but a terrific tackle laid down by Pokowitz normally number 55 Pokowitz wearing number 52 today there you see him 52 gets Keenan and he is pumped for that tackle for a loss his fifth of the year Really one of the better leaders for this Northport team up front. The kind of kid his head coach says you could rely on. Third and eight. There's Keenan. A nice run there close to the sticks as Keenan pushed it forward outside of the 20. So he is inches, it looks like, by the spot. Fourth down, and you got to imagine here there are they, there is a kicking element for West Islip, and they'll actually look for a bring out the chains here as referee Mark Negrin Sr. called for the chain crew to come on out, and we'll get a good vantage point here from our cameras and whoa the nose of the football short of that first down marker so again you got to figure but Letty will go here you've got plenty of options it could be McChaney Keenan calling his own number as well 
a big fourth down. Northport got the stop on the first attempted fourth down conversion by West Islip. Keenan to McChaney. McChaney dives forward. And he will get enough for the first down. And again, didn't need too much to get it, but he does get himself to the 20-yard line. So Conrad McChaney gets the first down run. Six foot, 210 pounds. Beast of a tailback for the Lions. So first and 10 from the 20-yard line. As Wes Islip looks for the response. Keenan takes it himself. Cuts it to the left. Machini that time was his lead blocker. And he gets out to about the 12. Should be a gain of eight there on first down. So Keenan looking certainly not the worst for wear after that broken arm to his non-throwing arm. Second and three from the 13 yard line. Inside handoff, McChaney cuts inside and he is hit there by Cleary. Number 51, the junior. That's a fun matchup right there between the two of those guys. That's physicality against physicality with McChaney and Cleary. It's a first and goal from the seven now for West Islip. Good first drive of the second quarter. There's McChaney. Oh, what a great hole. McChaney will get in for the seven-yard score. So that is the response that West Islip had hoped for. And it came from McChaney. A seven-yard touchdown run. Watch this hole here on the outside. That was Gagliardo, number two, creating it. And Machini doesn't need a lot to get through, but a huge hole as now Boyle, the sophomore, comes in for the PAT. The kick is up. He has plenty of leg, and it is good. So that's the response, right? After conceding right away and only giving up a field goal. All of a sudden now it's a 9-7 game with 5.20 left in the second quarter. When we spoke with Steve Maletti and talked about his regular season outlook, the Lions, he said, look, we feel pretty good, especially because of the way we go into the postseason. We beat a very tough North Babylon team. You don't look at the records, he says, when you play a rivalry game like, like North Babylon. But to win the fashion they did, it said he said it showed the resiliency of this group. He said like any team in D2, everyone's a little banged up at this time of year. It's just the nature of D2. It's been that way, he said, since I played in the 90s. He said we're a very young team, the most sophomores that he's ever played with in his 20-plus years of coaching, but they don't back down from anyone. And we uh, mentioned sort of how they ended the regular season, West Islip, and the win that he was referring to uh, – a big one against North Babylon. 17-14 at North Babylon. Keenan to Chris Pirapato for a 32-yard touchdown with 50 seconds left. It capped a 70-yard drive in that game at Cheney. We just saw him score the touchdown. He also ran for a score among his 15 carries for 115 yards. Nick DeMeo had a 27-yard field goal as well in that one. So both teams coming off of tight late wins in the regular season and or to end the regular season to go into the postseason on a high note Boyle after the PAT gets good distance it's fielded inside the five but a fantastic return there by Gaumont gets to the outside Gaumont what a tackle as well saving the touchdown was your kicker Sean Boyle and Gamont recovered it inside of his own five. And a big, big return there as well. Here it is again. And actually, 
Yeah, Gamont, you see him there. Look at that tackle there by Boyle. That could have been six. So you receive the ball at your own five. You get out to midfield. So what is that? About a 46, 47-yard return for Gamont. As Northport takes over from the West Side Slip 48 yard line. See the stands opposite us filled in nicely as well. That's the visiting stands for West Ice Slip. Johansson off the low snap. Duck Sunder and McCheney will grab him by the ankles. He was chased that entire way. Acosta 54 was behind him, but then Machini was the one who pulled him down. But a good gain on first down by Johansson. We mentioned at the beginning of our broadcast, Johansson with over a thousand yards in the air, but also just shy of 150 yards on the ground. Did get there with that run, second and six from the 44 yard line and an official's whistle it might be a I think Machini's gonna have to or didn't have a mouthpiece I think so eagle eyes there by the officials recognizing Machini didn't have the necessary equipment there's that inside handoff. And this time, Campbell is pushed backwards. Looked like in on the tackle again was Aliani, 56. We've called his name a few times, Aliani. That versatile player. Third and five. For Northport, and suddenly the defense of West Islip a little more stout. They gave up the score on their first possession or first play from scrimmage for Northport. Johansson goes to the flats. He finds Allstrand up the sideline. Allstrand beats his first man, and he's forced out inside of the 25 yard line. JJ Allstrand. He can do a little bit of everything, all strand. And a nice gain. You see it again. Nice cut inside. Breaks a tackle there before he's forced out of bounds. So first and 10 for Northport from the West Islip 26-yard line. Johansson under center. Hands back to Campbell. Bounces it to the outside. The block there for Campbell came from 69. That's Poliotitis. Very good player. Very good pulling guard is 69. Poliotitis. He moves with power. He finishes his blocks. And that's the way that Campbell went for that three-yard gain. Second and seven. 2.56 left in this fast-moving first half. 9-7 the lead for Northport. Campbell switches over to the right hip of Johansson, who is now in shotgun. He's back to pass. Finds a receiver, cutting inside and getting pulled down inside the 15. That's a first down reception. Here you see it again. That's Hellrigal. Another one of several lacrosse guys as well from the Long Island Championship winning Northport lacrosse team. First and 10 from the 13 yard line. Northport looking to try to get more points on the board. They lead at 9-7. Johansson 
Finds Hellriggle again, and he is down at the two-yard line. Great route run there by Hellriggle, the senior. Good size as well, 6'4", 215, a dynamic receiver. Another one of these guys, you see him running off the field now, who will play a lot of different positions, Hellriggle will. You start checking on there is Tom Butler, 32. Second and goal. First and goal from the three-yard line. Inside handoff, Campbell gets the push, and he gets in as well. Jackson Campbell, a three-yard touchdown run, and he extends Northport's lead. So Jackson Campbell gets in the end zone and Watch how close this is as well. Here's Campbell pushing, pushing. There's the reach as well. And make sure he gets the confirmation. His big guys in front knew it was a touchdown. He had lock there, 72. Maybe beating the officials to the signal. The PAT is up and good. So Northport extends their lead now to 16 to 7 with 127 left in the second quarter. When we spoke with Northport head coach, Pat Campbell, we asked him sort of how you felt going into the postseason. He said, look, I honestly, I wish we were playing a little bit better. He believes that Northport has as much talent as anybody, but he says we've got to be a little more disciplined in everything that we do. He said, look, we're practicing, the, we're practicing well. We're having good weeks of practice so far leading up to this game, but he feels like they know what they're doing. It's just a matter of executing with a level of discipline that gets it done. And he said of West Islip, they are really good. So he was certainly very concerned coming into this game. Programming note for you. We will show you some of the Northport band, their performance at halftime. We showed you their uh, rendition of the national anthem, and they'll be back out here at halftime as well. They're currently lining up behind the visiting bleachers, getting set for their halftime performance. So Connolly back to kick off. A couple men are deep. It's a Ponty and Barani. And it will be returned by, by Barani from the 20. And he will get stuffed by Aiden Foley, 64. So where's the ice slip? They've got, you see in the bottom of your screen, they've got two timeouts left in this first half. They've got a minute nine here to try to push the football down the field. Remember too, Northport won that toss, but they deferred to the second half. So the Tigers will have the ball coming out. Keenan and shotgun. Rolls to his left. Has Machini as a blocker. Tucks it down. Nowhere to go, though. Great tackle put on by Joe Hansen. That's QB on QB. Eagers as well. And that was a no gain. Yeah, apologize. I thought that was a 2-8, but it was a 2-6. So it was Eagers with the tackle. Again, Keenan, a burst, and gets shoved out of bounds. That will, though, stop to clock. As Jackson Campbell, who's done a lion's share of the running for the Tigers, gets the tackle there, or the force out. So it's 
a third down, third and five from the 46 yard line. Keenan fakes the pass, gets good blocking up the field. Cleary got a piece. McEnroe finished him off, but it's a first down run, so that will stop the clock. And West Isaac will take a timeout here. There you see again Keenan. Cleary did get a piece of him, but he gets him out to the 45 yard line. Lions take one of their final two timeouts. When we asked Steve Maletti about the strength of this year's team, he said, look, we are very young. There's been a big learning curve and a lot of growing up to do, but there's a lot of younger kids who have more leadership roles on this year's West Islip team than we've had in the past. So the 10th graders, he feels at this point of the year in week nine, if you will, he says, look, they've graduated at this point. Now the sophomores are juniors, the juniors are seniors, and you'd almost say the seniors are like graduate students at this point. So all that learning they did through eight weeks of the regular season, although they only played the seven, they had that. Both teams had their game against West Babylon canceled this season. But through those regular season weeks, a lot of learning, and they get to where they are now in the postseason again. First and 10 from the 45 yard line. In motion, there is Carpinello. Ball's tipped. It gets into the hands of Carpinello, and he gets another first down, which will once again stop the clock. There is, looks to be a flag down at the 30-yard line. So we'll see what the call will be from our referee this afternoon, Mark Negrin Sr. in the white hat. Here's the call. Personal foul, face mask against the defense. So a big opportunity now for West Islip. That will push it 15 yards up the field. And let's see if we can show it to you again. There's the pass. And right there, you can see the face mask. So 15-yard penalty will give the Lions a chance to at least take a shot at the end zone, right? Keenan rolls. He will go end zone. Lobs it up. And it is knocked down nearly intercepted there. By Campbell. So 10 seconds left for West Islip. You got to figure maybe another shot, right? at the end zone. They do have that timeout at their disposal, and again, they do have a pretty good kicking game as well. Keenan with McChaney to his left. He will run himself, cuts it inside, a great run. It's a first down run, which stops the clock anyway, but West Islip taking no chances, calling their final timeout as well. Keenan, there you see it again. He follows McChaney, C44, then he cuts inside. Look at McChaney, another huge block, 44 up the field. He was just a wrecking crew there. Two big blocks by 44. So now three seconds left. You're at the two-yard line. For West Islip, a huge play here. And again, Northport gets the ball coming out. So this could be a, a, a big momentum shift here. Because if you're Northport and get a stop, maybe you score again quick. And that's a 14-point swing. Here we go. Keenan not under center. He is in shotgun. Runs to his left. Cuts it inside and scores. What a huge touchdown by Patrick Keenan as time expires in this first half. Keenan, watch it again, runs to his left, has all those blockers. 66 you saw there, Antipas. 
when I asked Maletti for the pronunciation of his last name, he said, it's like antipasta. Just take out the Asta part. William Antipas, number 66, big block there. Here's the PAT attempt. It is up, and it is good by Boyle. What a way to end the first half for the visitors from West Islip. As time expires, Keenan, the rushing touchdown. As time expires, Boyle the PAT, and we've got a ball game here. It's a two-point game. Northport with the lead. It's the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals. It's the Orlin and Cone game of the week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516 516- 403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Northport High School. Special treat for you here at halftime. It's the Northport Marching Band, and it is a large marching band at that. If you saw the their rendition of the national anthem, uh, we're going to get treated to their halftime performance now here on the field. Kirsten Pitsick and Kylie Weiserick. The flag line captains are Taylor Brett, Colleen Dawkins, Savannah Levy, and Natalie Mancusi. Our show this year is, is titled, is filled with music by the famous artist Pitbull and is titled Tigers Worldwide. We hope you enjoy the music and the band dance complete with audience participation. In the closer, be sure to watch as we spell out Tigers. And now let's hear a loud applause for our ti- as we celebrate our Tiger Pride band drum majors. Take it away.
You're watching the Orlin and Cone Game of the Week here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Not feeling the love after your last tennis match? We've got specialists for that. Running for the train, derail your knee? We've got specialists for that. Diving after that grounder, leaving you grounded? We've got specialists for that. Orlin and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Arjula, over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Wide open, Perazzi, he gets it, Perazzi, foot raise, 10, 5, make it, touchdown, punch, power punch. The trickery, Ryder gets it back, goes over the top for Haberman, what a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this in the other direction, make it, touchdown, touchdown East. Pressure. He's got a man. That's complete. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Southside. got a good secondary so if they're passing a lot he kind of likes where they are there's Robbins though the powerful runner Cam Robbins breaks two tackles breaks a third tackle and he's in for the score Teed off by shoulder pain? We've got specialists for that. Realizing you've pulled out more than weeds? We've got specialists for that. Doing the twist making you shout? We've got specialists for that. Orlin and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, 
foot and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Welcome back to Northport High School. Dylan Butler here. Second half, still a few moments away. The band just clearing the field here at Northport, the Suffolk Division II showdown with the host Tigers leading West Islip in the 4-5 matchup, 16-14. Didn't take Northport very long to find the end zone. How about their first play from scrimmage after getting a stop on fourth down? Owen Johansson avoids the sack, gets on his back foot, and he finds J.J. Allstrand for a 39-yard touchdown. First play from scrimmage. That made it 6 nothing, with 9.44 left in the first quarter. Connolly extended the lead to 9 nothing on a 20-yard field goal attempt. But then Wes Lyslip responded in a big way. Here is Conrad Machaney. Follows the block by Gagliardo. Gets in the end zone for the 7-yard touchdown. PAT was good. That cut the deficit to 9-7 with 5.20 left in the second quarter. Jackson Campbell was a beast. All first half, number 20, gets in the end zone here the short three-yard run for Campbell extended the lead to 16-7 with 127 left in the second quarter. And then West Islip got it right down to the last second. Here is Patrick Keenan running left. Again, Gagliardo provides the block on the outside, dives into the end zone. Boyle's PAT was good. And that is your score at the half. 16-14 is your score. The Northport guys in the field right now warming up and Wes Lyslip coming back. Let's show you the, the brackets again and sort of how uh, what what we look like here in Suffolk Division 2. And again, you'd be hard-pressed to say anybody at this point is a favorite coming in. You see them there. Last night was the only game played. Lindenhurst with a big win over Konequat in that one. That was 35-13 for Lindy, the top seed, beat the eighth seed. But really all these matchups, right? Huntington, Bellport, Newfield, Hills East. If it is chalk going into the semifinals, you'd have some incredible games. Northport would go to 
Lindy. You'd have Hills East going out to Bellport. And again, all these teams have beat each other during the regular season. The way that Steve Maletti, the West Islip head coach, says, you know that it's a tight season. You know there's a lot of parity in Suffolk Division Two when there's no undefeated teams. And there you see, look at the records there from one to five. And even five there, West Islip, those are some tight losses for West Islip. They've not, you know, they lost 21-7 in Northport. They lost 7-3 to Lindenhurst, 21-10 to Bellport. These are close games as well. And Lindy and Bellport, your top two seed, the power points give Lindy that slight edge there, but uh, it is anybody's ball game. Right now, the only team not playing or left playing among that group is number eight, Konequat, who lost last night to Lindenhurst. So Suffolk Division Two, as has been the case all year, has been the black and blue division in Suffolk County. And, uh, you know, both head coaches have talked about being banged up at this time of the year and, uh, and, and really how crazy it's been. Usually, you know, you've got that one team, you know, maybe a North Babylon with Terry Manning and, and those teams that, you know, maybe were the number one team and everyone's fighting with them. But, but this year it's been no clear-cut favorites at all in Suffolk Division Two, which makes it so much fun. We want to thank uh, the folks over there at the concession stand, the great line there, and that's a, for a good reason. We were able to uh, be treated before the game to some hot dogs, pretzels, some waters from the concession stand. We thank them for that, and listen, if you're uh, anywhere near here, Hit up Mario's over there. That's a great concession stand. One of the better ones in Suffolk County. We'll have another Suffolk County playoff game next week, but we'll also have the Catholic Football League championships coming up on November 20th. We're excited to bring that to you. We're the official broadcast partner of the 2021 CHSFL championships, the Double A Two, the Double A One, and the Big Boy Triple A. Division, November 20th from Mitchell Athletic Complex. You can watch all three games on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You can hit subscribe there on the bottom right of your screen as well. And that's going to be a really great afternoon. St. Anthony's with a big win last night over Cardinal Hayes. So they advance to the semifinals where they will take on Iona Prep. Other games being played this afternoon as well in the Catholic Football League. Among the Long Island schools, in the double A2 and the double A1, the top seed, both Long Island schools, Holy Trinity in double A2, Chaminade in double A1. So Northport, we mentioned before, they won the toss. They deferred to the second half, which made that West Islip touchdown so, so important because Northport will have the ball here coming out to start the second half. So Boyle gets set, the sophomore, one of many sophomores on this West Islip roster. Boots it long, it's fielded at about the 10 yard line. And a return of about 13 yards on that play. It was Gaumont with the return as Northport's offense Back onto the field. Led by their QB, their junior captain, number 28, Owen Johansson. Might be, might be a better linebacker than he is a quarterback, but because of some injuries, again, and the wear and tear of Suffolk Division II, being utilized really not much there in the defensive side, Johansson. Escapes pressure. Gets to the outside. A little dump pass. Mahones-esque 
to Aiden Campbell for the short gain to the 35-yard line. Or 25-yard line. A gain of one. Good job by Johansson there to avoid some pressure. And there you see he dumps it off to Campbell. They'll give him officially a gain of two, second and eight from the 26-yard line. Just underway here in the second half. It's the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals. It's the Orlin and Cone game of the week. We thank the fine folks at Orlin and Cone, Ray Nelson and the gang, for all their support here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. There's the run by Eagers. He'll get out to about the 30-yard line. Eagers was another guy who was banged up. He got hurt in week one. His first game back in the regular season was that loss to Hills East. He was a starter a year ago. Physical, fast, athletic, high athletic IQ as well. Third and four from the 30-yard line for Northport. Johansson goes over the middle. He has a man and just misses the outstretched arms of Hellrigal. Hellrigal had his man beat. It was a good ball thrown as well, but just past the outstretched arms of Hellrigal. So Northport forced to go three and out. Aponte is deep as well as Barani for West Islip. Ooh, it's a dangerous one. Fielded and somehow gotten off. It'll take a Northport bounce and down at about the 37 yard line but some nervy moments there as the snap was low it was fielded well and a good punt as it turned out so West Islip will take over from the 38 yard line two point game in this one it was a 21-7 win regular season for Northport It's Keenan taking the ball himself. Gets a nice block by Antipas. A gain of five for Keenan. And again, Maletti could not have had more nicer words to say about Keenan again he's a lacrosse guy as a junior who had a broken arm in week three but he did everything possible to get back hands off there to McCheney who pushes forward to about the 46 yard line should be a gain of three but Keenan the QB did a little bit of everything or did everything he could to get back on the field he didn't just say, you know what, look, coach, I, I can't do it. I'm going to rest up. I've got lacrosse in the spring. And Maletti says it really sh it, it tells him everything he needed to know about the way that he, that he, what he cares about this team and, and uh, how important he is to this team and how much he cares about this football team. Third and three for the Lions. Get to the line quick. Keenan and shotgun. Follows McCheney. Gets the first down and he lands inside Northport territory to the 49 yard line. When we've seen Keenan run it, as we see here, he follows number 44. There you see McCheney again. Nice upfield blocks, allowing Keenan to get the first down. So McChaney, he was our impact player for West Islip. You could see the impact that he's having 
in multiple facets, right? Not only running the football, but also being that lead blocker when Keenan rushes it. Here comes Keenan. Pressure comes from the back end, and he is taken down. That was great pursuit by Jackson Campbell, number 20. Campbell came from the weak side, and great pursuit by Campbell, the senior. 34 tackles, and there you see just swiping at the legs. 34 tackles, three for losses, a one and a half sacks, and a pass deflection on the year for Campbell. Gain of two. It's second and eight from the 47 yard line. Here's Gagliardo. Cuts inside, spins, turns, and he gets to about the 43. Gagliardo, a guy, again, can play on both sides of the ball, but they've kept him fresh to be on offense. He showed some toughness last week against North Babylon, so Maletti says, you know what? We're going to call his number a little bit more, and he's done well with those assignments. Having another running back, Maletti said, at this point of the year especially is huge. A fresh running back at that in the senior, Dylan Gagliardo. Third and three. There's McChaney. Turns in that second effort. Looks like got McChaney. The first down, or at least close to the marker. Pokowitz with the tackle. They will move the chains. And again, that's the second effort. Watch 44 here. He gets hit well short, but he continues to churn the leg, spins and turns, and he gets down at the 39-yard line. So another conversion on third down for West Islip. As they've got a fresh set of downs from the 39-yard line of Northport. Aponte was in motion. Keenan turns it inside. And this time, maybe gets a yard. Good job defensively by several Tigers led by Pokowitz. Pokowitz a leader. The kind of kid you can rely on, says head coach Pat Campbell. He says another guy, too, you can line up in several different positions. He's in ends. He could play inside on the defensive line. Second and eight. We've seen West Lysa line up in a lot of different formations. There's McChaney again. And McEnroe, 42, in on the tackle. McChaney. Poliotitis also in on the tackle and a short gain. So another third down attempt here. This is a third and six. So the first two on this drive were a little bit more manageable for the Lions. Second and th third and two, third and three. This time it's a third and six from the 35 yard line. Power package. Keenan, though, with the fake. Campbell chases him from behind, and he is hammered right at the 35-yard line. McNaughton with the tackle. So fourth down now from the 35-yard line. No gain. It's fourth and six from the 35-yard line. Here we go. Empty backfield for Keenan. This time he's got a man in motion. Fakes it that way. Keenan back to pass. Nothing doing. Ducks out, and he's taken down. That one blew up. And a stop for the defense of Northport. So a bunch of guys there. Locke was in there. Watch again. Tries to dump it down. Good job there, too. Just, just keeping an eye on 18, Carpinello. He was the intended receiver. But then when Keenan saw that Carpinello was completely blanketed, he had nowhere to go. So the Tigers, another fourth down stop. The first time they got a fourth down stop, 
They found the end zone on their first play from scrimmage as Johansson with that early touchdown to Allstrand. Inside handoff this time. Look at a spin. Campbell breaks the tackle. Breaks into the secondary. Jackson Campbell. Touchdown, Northport. 57 yards to the house. The second time Northport scores on their first play from scrimmage after a fourth down stop. And here, McChaney had him wrapped up. Campbell did a 360, spun out of that tackle, and then he was gone. Jackson Campbell. His fourth or fifth rushing touchdown of the year. A flag was thrown. Here's the point after attempt. Campbell's PA or the PAT is up and it is good. To Jackson Campbell, a 54 yard touchdown extends Northport's lead to 23 to 14. You're watching the Orland and Cone game of the week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Welcome back to Northport High School. Dylan Butler here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. It's the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals, and Northport extends their lead. A good kickoff fielded by Aponte at the 10-yard line. Aponte breaks a couple tackles before he's down at the 27, but it's remarkable what Northport's done because, again, you go back to the first quarter, and they get a stop on fourth down, right? So now momentum is in Northport's way. On the first play that they had from scrimmage, Johansson finds Allstrand for a 39-yard touchdown. So the same thing happens in the second half. The Tigers get a stop on fourth down, and then Campbell takes the first play from scrimmage for a touchdown, a 54-yard touchdown run, a huge one. There for Northport, which extends its lead to 23 to 14. Keenan looking for another answer. Good gain there on first down by the West Islip QB. He'll get taken down at about the 35 yard line. Patrick Keenan with a gain of eight, seven, second and three. Maletti certainly wasn't looking beyond this year when he said this, but. Listen, West is going to be really good for the for the years to come. So many sophomores have played a big role in this year's team. You've also got Keenan. He's a junior. He'll be back as well inside. Handoff, McChaney gets a couple of tough yards. Big number 74. And on the tackle... Brings up a third and one. West Islip has moved the chains. But 
but they've struggled to get in the end zone. There's Keenan faking the handoff. Barrels himself forward or flings himself forward, if you will, to the 39-yard line. That will move the chain for West Islip. When we asked Maletti about the regular season game against Northport, he said, look, it was about big plays. It was a good game. They've got a great QB who could sling it, and you've got to stop the big plays. He says, I think this could be a close game if you don't allow those 40-yard passes on third and long, those 25-plus plays. Well, they've given up one or two, and they've been big ones for scores. There's Keenan finding a receiver. That was Carpinello, another sophomore who's been like lightning in a bottle for the Lions this year just gets better and better each game that he plays. If he gets himself in the open field, generally or usually he is gone. The future looks really bright for West Sides. We just mentioned that. Guys like Carpinello are a big reason why. Second and one. Keenan to Machaney, and again, just lowers the shoulder, gets the push forward, and he will get the first down for West Islip, McNaughton, and McEnroe. The M&M boys in your linebacking group for Northport combine on the tackle for the year. If you add up their tackles coming into this game, McNaughton and McEnroe, they've got 80 between them. And there they go again, combining on another tackle. 11 and 42, pushing Machaney back. And we mentioned before, McNaughton, right? A big cog in that Long Island championship team for lacrosse last spring. Same on the basketball court. Before that, there's Keenan. And he will just take a knee or he'll slide forward for three. As it's third down now, third and four. As we are under a minute left in this third quarter, it's getting late for West Islip. Especially in a game with both teams being so run heavy, the clock kind of quickly becoming a factor. Hand off to Machaney, pushes himself forward and gets the first down, Lee following Antipas along the way. Antipas looked like he was like a, like a snowblower there, watch 66. Plowing forward, getting Machaney the yards he needed. Here's Keenan taken down by McNaughton at the 30, a gain of five on first down for West Islip. But that is the final play of the third quarter. It's the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals, and the host Tigers are 12 minutes away from surviving and advancing in the Division II playoffs. You're watching the Orlin and Cone Game of the Week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Arjulo over the middle. He's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long. Wide open is Parazzi. He gets it. Parazzi. Foot raise. And five. Make it. Touchdown. Punch. Power punch. Rickery, Ryder gets it back, goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is gonna take this the other direction. Thank it! Touchdown! Touchdown, East! We welcome you back to Northport High School. Dylan Butler here. We're thankful that you're able to join us. Final 12 minutes of regulation here in the Suffolk Division II quarterfinals, or the qualifying round, if you will. Northport trying to join 
Lindenhurst in the semifinals. Lindy defeated Connectquat last night. The other three quarterfinal games, including this one, all being played at simultaneous times here this afternoon. 23-14, your score. West Islip trying to cut into their deficit. Pushing forward is Keenan. Pretty much all game for West Islip. It's been a steady diet of Keenan and Machini the leading the way, following the big guys up front. Antipas, Tap, Gitzinger, De Cristoforo, and Mushhorn, the starting offensive lineman for West Islip. Third down, Keenan. Goes to the outside, cuts it back inside, falls just about at the sticks. Number 26, Danny. Looks like it's the 25-yard line, which should be enough, down. and it is, to move the chains. Keenan hasn't taken many shots downfield. He has found Carpinello a couple of times, and... Chris Pirapato is also a good option as a receiver. But again, when you talk about like leading receivers, Calderon, 32, he's got 11 receptions and then seven for Rocco Carpinello, who was the fake rusher there as Keenan pushes forward on first down. That's the danger of getting into a big deficit if you are a team like West Isa, or many others here in Division Two, is that they're so run heavy that it takes so many plays and so many downs to get in the end zone. So when you're the trailing team, certainly time is not your friend. Cleary in on the tackle along with Canales, number 50. Keenan gets three yards on that play. Number 11, Dylan McNaughton on the stop. Keenan's been a busy guy here this afternoon, the junior. Got a lot of credit has to go to Bobby Richardson, who was the backup for Keenan and, and really kept West Islip afloat until Keenan got back. He did a really good job. Third and two. Now from the 17 yard line, Keenan. Hands off, it's Machaney turning inside. He'll get the first down. First and goal for the Lions. Machaney. Another big run. He was our impact player for West Islip. There you see him again. What a workhorse he is as well. He'll get the ball. Fumble. And it's Northport who recovers. It was a botched handoff. And falling on it was 52. Jack Pokowitz. Watch it again. The handoff looked like it was Keenan to McChaney. But there goes the ball. And Pokowitz says, oh, that's mine. Jumps on it. And what a big play in this game. The Lions were looking to get in the end zone. Maybe again make it a two-point game. And instead, the momentum shifts back to Northport. And just like West Islip, Northport, a run-heavy team. And they've got 9.24 on the clock. What they've got to do, though, is make sure they get out to midfield. There's Campbell. And what a workhorse he has been on the day. Campbell with two touchdowns, a three-yard TD in the first half. That extended Northport's lead at 16-7. And then really the biggest play of the game to this point, that 54 yard touchdown run to make it 23-14. That's after Northport's second fourth down stop of the day. Second and four from the 15. And a little confusion there for Northport, so they're forced to call a timeout. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, 
We'll keep it here as we see the Northport sideline and Pat Campbell there as well. And again, said you know, coaching his alma mater. That's one of the really cool things he said is is his former coach texts him after every game. He lives part of the time in South Carolina, part of the time around here. He put him on the huddle account as well, so he get texts every game. He's asking questions. It's great. He said to kind of keep his former coach involved with the team. Well, he asked Campbell about his team's keys in this game. He says, look, on defense, West Islip, they stunt a lot. They crowd the box. They move around quite a bit as well. So we have to play up front with our eyes open, our heads up, and we've got to play assignment football. We can't try and do everybody else's job. We just have to do our own. We have to know the scheme up front. We have to trust the scheme up front and make sure that we're communicating with each other. So we all know who to block. Second and four off that timeout for Northport from their own 15. There's the handoff. Campbell will get a couple before he is downed by Chris Pirapato, number 28. Again, the younger of the two Pirapato brothers. Older brother Joe Pirapato, 88, on the defensive line. He's a guy that Maletti says, look, when we've got so many young kids, Joe Pirapato is that blue pride, the lion heart, the kind of guy that gives everything for your team. Big down here. Third and two for Northport. Inside handoff. Campbell turns, spins, tries to get out to the first down marker. He's downed at about... The 18, it looks like, so he should be shy. Plus, Campbell, you see there, lost his lid. So regardless, he's got to come out on this play. It'll be a fourth and one, and you got to think, yeah, Northport Campbell is not going to be that riverboat gambler right now. He will punt it away. It's a good chance here for West. Ice lip deep for them is Bahraini, and again, Acosta. Snap here also very, very important. It's a good snap and a really good punt as well. Fair catch call, but dropped. Bahrain, he's got to jump on it, and he does. So the fair catch was initially called by Aponte, but he fumbled the football, and that's a live ball then to Bahrain. Had to get on his horse, get back and track, and make sure that he fell on that football. So here we go for West Islip. After doing everything they could to get down the field before that botched handoff led to a turnover. West Islip now back, hoping for a big play to again, maybe get it to a two-point game. Keenan looks the pass, rolls to his left, cuts inside. He'll get a couple before he goes out of bounds, stopping the clock at 6.47 left. It was McEnroe with the tackle. Great game day atmosphere here on a windy and cool November afternoon. It is playoff football weather for sure. A one yard gain for Keenan. He'll go back to pass with that same option that he tried for before where he tried to connect with Carpinello. It wasn't there. That's a loss of one on the play. And instead, he was taken down by Poliotitis, the senior. Two way lineman, and there appears to be an injury here for West Islip. So. It might be Keenan, their QB. He's all the way across the field. 
And it is. He'll come out. So we should see Richardson here come on. And again, Richardson was the guy through most of the season for West Islip. Richardson is number 15. He's a guy that Maletti says really held this team together as a sophomore with limited experience as a QB. Richardson now with arguably his biggest play of the season. We'll see how long Keenan is out. It might only be for this play. Here's Richardson now rolls right, gets good protection. Good look as well, but it's incomplete. Looked like it deflected as the attempt was to Gagliardo. This will bring up fourth down, and with 547 left, West Islip will look to punt it away. Hellriggle is the deep man for Northport. We've not had any trick plays to this point. Might be a hard place to do that right now for West Isop. High snap. Fielded well, but it is a trick play. There's Boyle. Finding 18. Carpinello. But he will be shy of the first down mark. So we just said we haven't had a trick play. They go for the trick play, but it's another turnover on downs. There you see the fake by Boyle. Does get a man in Carpinello, and that's the kind of that's the guy that you want to get out in the space. But good pursuit there by the Tigers to number 18, and that time an inability to make a game-changing play there by Carpinello. There's an injured Tiger on the field. We'll stay right here. Good hand there for Poliotitis, 69. Uh, he has been a warrior all game long on both sides of the football. And now you've got to say, right, with 537 left, a nine-point lead for Northport, they've just got to manage it right now, right? You see the nice hand there by Johansson to one of his guys who protects him, Poliotitis as well as he walks out in the field and again gets a good reception from a very big crowd here on Saturday afternoon. Crowd so big that it's actually lined up along the fence as well back toward the end zone. And Poliotitis with a it's a roar from the crowd as he signals to them that he believes he's all right. First down run, nowhere to go. It'll be hit for a loss. It's Eagers, the ball carrier. Second and 13 on that loss of three. You see in the bottom of your screen, too, the timeouts, right? You've got three for West Islip, two for Northport. And the clock just ticked under five minutes left. Johansson on the toss. A broken tackle. And there's a couple of flags thrown. It was all strand on the run. And we'll see the call here by our referee, Mark Negrin Sr. It's a block in the back, in the back. on the offense. And our referee, Mark Negrin Sr., the umpire, Mark Negrin Jr., line judge Jose Ramos, and the back judge is Bailey Negrin. That will push Northport back to their own, to the West Islip 49-yard line. As Joe Hansen gets the call from the sideline. The graduating seniors in the spring, as part of like a group chat or a text 
with Coach Campbell said you've got to have Johansson as a captain next year. You just you got to do it. No questions asked. There's Jackson Campbell. A nice gain there on second down. And Wes Islip will take one of their three timeouts now. With 4.13 left. We'll take the break with them as well. You're watching the Orlin and Cone game of the week on the Varsity Sports Network. Teed off by shoulder pain? We've got specialists for that. Realizing you've pulled out more than weeds? We've got specialists for that. Doing the twist, making you shout? We've got specialists for that. Orlin and Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. We welcome you back to Northport High School. 23-14 is your score in favor of the host Tigers with 4.13 left in the fourth quarter. The second playoff game in Suffolk County this weekend for the Varsity Media Sports Network. We were at Big Boy D1 last night as Ward Melville as a flag against the defense. Encroachment is the call. But Ward Melville, a big win last night over Sachem North in Division I out at Stony Brook University, Laval Stadium. We will be somewhere in the 631 next weekend. You want to follow our social media handles, we'll let you know there where we will be next weekend for a county semifinal. Third and 10 from the 39 yard line. Johansson back to pass. That is complete. Two big things happen on that play as the reception was made by Aiden Campbell. One, you make sure that it's completed pass, right? You don't want to stop the clock if you're Northport. The second big thing that happened there was you move the chains. Huge play there for the Tigers. For the Tigers, great pass there by Johansson to Aiden Campbell. Now you expect to see a healthy dose of running here for the Tigers. First and 10 from the West Islip 26 yard line. Inside handoff to Campbell, little stutter step, spins, turns, gets himself to the 20 yard line, a gain of six on first down. What a game Campbell has had as well. Two rushing touchdowns as well as to this point the play of the game. Maybe a varsity media top 10 play as well. That 54 yard touchdown run again. It came right after the second fourth down stop of the game by the Tigers. Second and four as we approach three minutes left in regulation time. Another handoff inside. Again, spinning, turning is Campbell. He'll get to the 17-yard line, which should bring up a third and one. And West Islip will call the timeout. Again, Northport doing all of this really without one of their best players in Andrew Miller, number 87. Campbell said 87 Miller would be a game-time decision. He wasn't sure if he'd be able to suit up Miller, an All-American lacrosse candidate, likely to go to one of the service academies for lacrosse. Had a great year this year as well. 10 receptions, 208 yards, two touchdowns. A two-year starter is Andrew Miller. So if you are Northport and you're able to win this game, maybe you'll get Miller back for the semifinals, which would be a huge addition for them. Third and two off the timeout. As you see in the bottom of your screen, West Isaac with one timeout remaining. 
And with 2.42 left here in the fourth quarter, you got to think if you're in Northport and you get those two yards that you want, it's just about smooth sailing from here. Again, Wes Lyslip is your defending Suffolk Division II champions. The regular season win by Northport was a historic one. More on that in a moment. There's the inside handoff. And that's the first down by Campbell. So in that 21-7 win in week two, it was Northport's first win over West Islip since 1996. Now, it's fair to say as well that Northport hasn't always been in Division Two. They've kind of bounced around. They've been in a Divi they've been a Division One team more than they've been a Division Two team, but still a historic win. And this one too uh, is approaching some historic status as well because, you know, again the the 2020 season, if you will, the 2021 spring season, right, was the last season of football. That's when West Islip won the championship. But then they were in the championship game. Another handoff for Campbell. Lowers the shoulder. Gets a couple more yards. They were in the championship game in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. So that's five straight years that West Lyslip has been in the championship game in Suffolk Division II. They are a minute 38 away from that streak being snapped. Northport, the four seed. West Islip, the five seed. Could Northport be heading to Lindenhurst maybe on Friday night? Lindy, the top seed. That's if all the favorites in the quarterfinal round or the qualifying round win. Another inside handoff. Campbell, can you get in the end zone for a third time? He'll push forward to about the five yard line. Sorry, by Jackson Campbell. Less than a minute As we are inside the final minute. If you're wondering, Northport lost by six points in week five to Lindenhurst. 20 to 14. And this final minute of regulation will be with the crowd on their feet, saluting their Tigers. There you see the crowd. You see some of those. Fat heads, if you will, those heads on a stick, <laughs> as they will just take a knee for the final 22 seconds. What a win here for Northport. They beat West Islip during the regular season, 21 to seven. And they will advance to the semifinals courtesy of a 23 to 14 win in the quarterfinals. For the first time in five years, West Islip will not be playing in the championship game for Suffolk Division II. They will be a new champion as well. Northport hopes that they are that team. It's, it hasn't been since 1991 since the Tigers have won a county championship. But Northport now within two games of potentially lifting that title. They will be in the semifinals in a week's time. We don't quite know yet who they will play. There you see the brackets. And again, it's not necessarily going to be the one four. They kind of reseed these after the qualifying round, which they call it. So if all the favorites win today, and we kind of think they will, then you will have Northport going to Lindenhurst. And then you'd have Hills East going to Bellport. What a final four that could be in Suffolk Division Two. Great show of respect here between these two teams as they line up for the post-game handshake. We will have a game for you next week. We don't know just yet where we will be. You want to follow all of, all of our social media handles to find that out. Where we do know it will be is on, is on November 20th. And that is at Mitchell Athletic Complex. 
the Catholic Football League Championships will be right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, November 20th from Mitchell Athletic Complex, the AA2, the AA1, and the AAA Championship. All will be right here. You want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel as well. So final score here from Northport. Happy scenes here for the Tigers. 23-19 is the win for Angelo Caezo for Ron Pierre giving you all of our moving images for our director extraordinaire or extraordinaires plural Brian Butler and Ben Turchin I'm Dylan Butler thanking you for joining us on the Orlin and Cohn game of the week right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports.